Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Vaccine Team Podcast. I am excited to talk about something you have been asking a lot about, and that is, could there be menstrual irregularities related to the COVID vaccine? I am joined by Dr. Shannon Scheel. She is an OBGYN doctor and also the medical director of labor and delivery at the Hospital of Central Connecticut. Doctor, thank you so much for being with us as this problem sort of starts coming about on social media with different reports. Yes, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Uh, this is something that I know there's not a lot of data on, but anecdotally, are you hearing concerns about this from your patients that perhaps their cycle is changing, either heavier bleeding or missing a period in at the same time they're getting a vaccine? Yeah, it, any data that's out there right now is purely anecdotal. Um, the CDC has really nothing collected that they've reported out on yet, but uh, I have heard reports, maybe not as many from my patients necessarily, but some of my colleagues and their patients, uh, where patients have been complaining of menstrual irregularities um, after both having COVID-19, the, the virus, as well as um, after receiving the vaccine. What could this be from? That's a good question. <laughs> um, so I, I don't think many people, we don't know for sure as of yet. But we do know that um, when women are under a lot of stress, when they have certain types of infections or chronic diseases, that they do in fact have menstrual irregularities. So it doesn't surprise me that women who have had COVID and continue to have post-COVID symptoms um, months out um, do have these menstrual irregularities, whether it means a heavier menses, they don't have their period that month, it's prolonged, it's shortened, I've kind of seen the whole gamut. Um, but after the COVID vaccine, I would guess that those um, side, that, that side effect would be shorter lived. Um, but again, I, I'm not, sh I just, we just don't know yet. The vaccine has only been out for a few months. A lot of what's, if people haven't heard about this and they're concerned, what we're seeing a lot is on social media. Um, there's um, hashtags, menstrual irregularities, a lot of women saying either it was more painful, their period, or they missed a cycle or any kind of irregularity at the same time that they got a vaccine that it happened right after. Now, I know sometimes this could be purely coincidental. So uh, other times it's enough women that are raising some eyebrows of, okay, what this is related to. If you have gotten the vaccine or gotten COVID and you're having menstrual irregularities, what do you advise women to do? I think anybody with menstrual irregularities, no matter whether they had COVID the vaccine or not, they need to call their doctor. So mm -hmm. something that, especially if they've been having regular cycles and all of a sudden they skip a cycle, that's always a sign of pregnancy. We always recommend taking a pregnancy test. Um, any irregular bleeding, so they bleed longer than their normal amount, they bleed less than the normal amount, it's more painful. Um, they you know, go months without or they go weeks with it. So anything like that, we would always want them to call us right away. Um, so it just depends on how much of an irregularity the patients are having that would potentially want to call us if it's only a day late or they miss one and they aren't concerned, we aren't necessarily hearing about it. But anything that's different from the norm um, and what your body is used to, we would, we would want to know and bring you in for an exam and testing possibly. So one article I was reading, and again, it's all hypothesis because nobody really has good data yet, but that there was some speculation from doctors that perhaps um, the vaccine would affect in some way uh, your lining and your estrogen levels, and that might be why you're seeing some irregularities. Is that anything to be super concerned about long term if there is an effect related to the vaccine or COVID? I don't think so, and I can't see how that would be long term. Um, the immune system and the endocrine system and your hormones, it's all intertwined. So if you're going to be having an immune response, whether it's from the actual virus or you do have a, an immune response after the vaccine, um, it can affect your hormones, which is estrogen is one of them, and that affects the lining of the uterus. So um, Again, I'm not sure how long-term this would be if that is happening to women. Um, so I'm anxious to hear more um, when data is actually collected and comes out. But I, I know that there was a preliminary study 
um, I shouldn't say preliminary, there was a study out of China early this year that looked at a small group of women, 200 some women, um, and about 25% of them reported these menstrual irregularities, um, but it did not show any effect in their fertility. Okay. So obviously it's uncomfortable, it's concerning, you know, there's a lot that can be said about having menstrual irregularities, but I know that there's been some um, messaging out there that the vaccine could affect fertility and that just isn't the case. So that's really an important thing because that, that was going to be my next question actually is people might be very vaccine hesitant if they think this is going to do anything to their fertility or as we, as mothers decide, should we give this to our teenage daughters? You're not concerned at all about fertility. You think these menstrual irregularities are something that are temporary. I can't say 100% no, there's no absolutes in life, but, you know, vaccines, we've had vaccines for years and years, and they haven't shown any adverse outcomes in, in women's fertility. Um, I know that the mRNA uh, vaccine is relatively new in terms of actually administering it to patients, but the science behind it is not new, and it's been studied for years and years before it actually has come out. So I think all the science has shown to date is that it does not affect a woman's uh, fertility and her chances of becoming pregnant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that, you know, teenagers um, or adolescents in general, they're growing and they typically do have menstrual irregularities um, from the onset to five to seven years out sometimes. So uh, it might be hard to tell is this vaccine or is this just adolescence? But again, if something just doesn't seem right, then they should call their doctor. Yeah. Um, as far as uh, your patients, um, you said there has been some vaccine hesitancy in your group and that in part because they might be worried about getting pregnant or being pregnant. And that's the main thing. That's what you're seeing more so than the concern about menstrual irregularities. Correct. I, yeah, I do see more, um, pregnant patients than non-pregnant patients, but um, I, I completely understand the hesitancy behind um, pregnant women not wanting to get the vaccine. Um, but it's, again, so far there has a study, um, there is a study that came out um, in the New England Journal a month or so ago that looked at a large group of women who um, were pregnant when they had uh, the vaccine and there was no, um, adverse outcomes to their, to their babies or their pregnancies. So I try to relay that information to my patients, but I think most of them still are concerned because it's relatively new. And, um, you know, if they want, they're already being good moms, they want what's best for their babies. So I, I do understand that, but I've also seen really severe outcomes in pregnant women that contract the virus. And so for me, I, I think that the risk of getting COVID is outweighs a theoretical risk of what could happen with the vaccine. Right. Okay. And I know, and that's something for important to know is that a lot of doctors that uh, both interviewing you, or as I read um, different doctors who are specifically being interviewed on this issue of menstrual irregularities are saying, yeah, you know, we are seeing something. We don't know exactly why, but we don't think it's a reason to skip the vaccine. Um, that is the messaging coming out based on the science that we have thus far. I just want to share with the listeners what, you know, some of the comments that have been posted um, that women have been writing. So I had my first COVID-19 vaccine in January, followed by the second in February. Since then, I've had hemorrhagic bleeding with clots. The month of April was the heaviest. Um, I thought I was going crazy. I even went to switch a doctor's appointment, uh, asked for new birth control because mine, it's so heavy. It's been a month straight or now I received my Moderna vaccine. I didn't get it for my period for three months. They did multiple blood tests, pregnancy tests, ultrasounds, everything came back normal. Finally, on April 4th, I've got it. And it's been heavy for the past 22 days. So there are some people who are like, what is going on with me? And mm -hmm. it would seem anecdotally that the only thing different they did is a vaccine. But I guess what people want to know is this doesn't happen when we get a flu vaccine or mm -hmm. another a tetanus shot or other things. So it seems very strange because we're not used to hearing this associated with vaccines, are we? I don't believe so. I mean, that's a really good point is that, you know, we do recommend the flu vaccine yearly and it's not like we see a lot of patients coming in. But I, you know, I'd have to run all the numbers. I'm not sure how many women in the reproductive age are receiving the flu vaccine versus are now receiving the COVID vaccine. And you just 
personally from receiving both, the side effects from the COVID vaccine are much more pronounced, right? Yes. People like if I get a flu vaccine, I don't know it. When I got the COVID vaccine and I also correct. got COVID, I was in bed both times. So yes. what you you're saying are is febrile. a stronger immune response. And yeah. And maybe- so I think that that just in your whole body, as I said, the immune system does communicate with your hormonal system. And so everything is just altered a lot more severely, I would suppose, than just receiving um the flu vaccine or the other vaccines that you mentioned. But I, I do think that um, that it just really has to do with the robustness of the, the immune response that you receive from it. You know, as I read from different doctors who are also echoing what you said, that we are getting some of these reports, but we really don't recommend skipping the vaccine. Uh, we don't even know if there's a true link yet, but we do know that um, most of the doctors I can see who have been quoted in different studies or reports are all saying they're not concerned about you taking the vaccine, but that the uterus is involved in the immune system and the immune system could be affected. And maybe if you could just take a minute and, and talk about this, because as a doctor, you understand it so much better. But I think a lot of people out there are thinking, whatever's going on in my gut doesn't affect my brain. We now know those are very connected. <laughs> you know, we, it, we're one body, but why would something going on with our immune system affect our uterus? Well, it affects all of your cells, basically. And the uterus is very unique. It's similar to, well, I won't go there, but it's, 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 we know it, it grows and it sheds once a month, right? Unless we're pregnant or on some other type of hormonal medicine that prevents that from happening. So, um, the immune system is full of different types of proteins and, and signaling, um, signaling um, communications that just kind of talks, it talks to each other basically. And it talks to parts of the immune system and it talks to other cells that are not necessarily part of the immune system, but it's all affected. All the, the cells of your body are still affected by this communication that's happening. And so, um, I think that because it's constantly growing and shedding and there's this turnover that's happening, it can easily be affected and that can somehow stop or become worse um, when something else in the body is off. Yeah. Like I said, we see this when women are very stressed out. Um, Women who are very, very thin with a low BMI, um, that can affect their periods. Um, Women with a high BMI, that can affect their periods. Women with diabetes thyroid disease, all of these things that don't necessarily include the immune system, but they include other parts, the, the endocrine system, the metabolic system, um, the stressors, you know, the cortisone in your brain, it, it all, it all functions together in a way. And the side effects, um, from it can be these menstrual irregularities. Have you seen like, even just in other sicknesses, maybe this would put people at ease. If someone has a really bad case of mono, or a really horrible case of the flu or something like that, does it sometimes affect their cycle? Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. It, it can. Um, I think that anybody that undergoes a, a stressor like a, of an infectious illness like that, um, major surgeries I've seen, um, just a lot of life stressors that they can have these irregularities as well. Okay. Cause some people are wondering, I saw some other reports, like, did I just enter perimenopause or am I, <laughs> what's happened? And some people saying, I usually have pretty bad PMS. I'm not noticing as much bad a PMS. Some of it's been positive. Like, okay, I didn't get a period and I don't have as many bad moods. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. but not that they wanted to stay that way forever. I guess, what would you, if people are having these menstrual irregularities, what would you say to them right now to monitor or to get some peace of mind? Um, well, I want to just know what, their pattern has been up to this point, at what times they got the COVID vaccines, what other health conditions they may have, um, if they're up to date on all of their screenings and their health appointments. Um, And um, I I would just kind of want to take a detailed history like that and make sure that it, you know, we're not ruling, we're not um, forgetting something else that could be causing these problems. And then I want to just see them and probably run some blood tests. Okay. So if you call your doctor and you say, I mean, I don't know, maybe you just wait. Is it one cycle? Is it an anomaly? Um, I was talking to my own doctor about that. And he's like, usually I would tell people like, let's just see, does it happen again next month? Because sometimes you can have an off month, but if you start noticing and you you know, we can all take take the pregnancy test that's at the drugstore. So if you know, you're not (laughs) pregnant and you just wonder what's going on, um, there are blood tests that the doctors could do to determine if maybe something has really shifted. 
I mean, I think it would just be basic hormone tests that we would do for any type of menstrual irregularity. There's okay. nothing that would specifically they test say, your oh, estrogen yes, this is, or yeah, we would look at your estrogen levels, something called your um, FSH, um, follicular stimulating hormone. Um, we would look at markers for your ovarian function. We would look at markers that could, well, the FSH or other things that could tell us whether you actually are perimenopausal. We would do a pregnancy test. So all of these hormonal markers um, that we know do affect the uterus, we would we would check because if one of those was off, then we actually could correct it. But there's nothing right now that we could do to test and say, oh yes, this is why, uh, you know, this was caused by COVID or the vaccine. Yeah, yeah. Is there anything else you want people to know? I just want to, I'm so happy you can join us in the conversation because it is one of those things that's circulating. And I know even in just my circle of moms going, oh my gosh, I know so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so more anecdotal stuff of people noticing differences. But at this point, it seems if I were to wrap it up for you, it seems like we kind of need to wait and see and see more of what the CDC is saying. The CDC, I guess, is saying it's not affecting women's fertility. They mm -hmm. are acknowledging that they're hearing these reports. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I think unfortunately, we just need more time. Um, I think social media is great because it does make people more aware of the things that are out there. But I also don't think that people should seek all of their answers from that. And so right. if they are noticing anything wrong, that the first thing they should do is call their doctor. And um, like I said, a lot of times when COVID wasn't a thing, if people came into my office and I did a pregnancy test and they were off you know, for a cycle or something and everything else seemed relatively normal. Um, I wouldn't be that worried necessarily, um, but unless it continued. So, you know, but it, everybody is different. And if one cycle is off and you're not comfortable with that or anything else doesn't feel right, then we would want to know about it right away. So the message that I would want to send is call your doctor right away if something's off with your cycles. And I still highly recommend the COVID vaccine. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, as someone who got COVID, it's not fun to get COVID either. And I can't really remember because I was pretty sick. It might've affected my cycle when I had it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's one of those things that you're paying attention more to having COVID. But um, so it, this is something that people need to watch. And I just want to say, we're speaking with Dr. Shannon Scheel. If people are listening, you're right at the Hospital of Central Connecticut. I don't know if you or your practice, um, if people are not with a doctor right now or they want to go, is your practice accepting new patients? Um, my practice, I'm actually a, I'm more of a teaching attending. So I work okay. with the resident clinic here and I'm the medical director of labor and delivery. But yes, we do have uh, several private practices that are accepting patients. So um, that come to this hospital. So there's good help out there. Don't just rely on Twitter, but uh, it's something that we continue to, we can continue to watch and uh, let's hope that it works itself out. We'll have to, I, I was saying to you earlier that maybe the reason why it's so new is we really didn't start vaccinating women of menstruating age until recently. Back yeah. in January, early on, these were people who would have already been in menopause. So it's really only in these last couple of months. So we haven't even given women a chance yet to see how many cycles it takes because a lot of women who are of that age are just starting to get their vaccines in the last month or two. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's just going to take another six to 12 months to really get a good insight onto the causes of this. So. But to leave people on a positive th thought, you're not <laughs> worried about it. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. No, I'm not. I understand that it, it can be stressful and it's concerning and it's annoying and um, that, you know, it's something that you should still seek medical advice for, but I'm not worried about it in terms of long-term issues. Okay. Doctor, thank you so much for sharing your time with us on the Vaccine Team Podcast. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Have a good day. Bye.